Hello and welcome to another fantastic episode of Paired Programmers. I'm one half of the Paired Programmers, Keith Ott. So today we're talking about how to get your phone or tablet to vibrate through a mobile web page using HTML5 and JavaScript with the Vibration API. So your first question might be, well, why would I want to add vibration to a web page? Well, the first reason is that mobile traffic is pretty heavy when it comes to websites. According to Stat Counters, back in August uh, 2015, 41.5% of all web traffic was coming from a mobile device. So you might want to leverage some of the features that mobile users are already used to. So it might be able to, you might be able to provide a more rich and closer to that native user experience. So for example, maybe it's a mobile chat site that you've built. When a user comes online, you might want to vibrate to notify the user that a user has come down, came online. Um, also, maybe you're building a mobile uh, web game. Uh, for example, you might provide some sort of force feedback if the player crashes or when it comes to their turn or whatever it might be. So uh, how is the support? Well, it's pretty good. Uh, right now it's supported um, on Android uh, 4.4.3 devices and higher uh, with the built-in Android browser. It's supported in Firefox, it's supported in Google Chrome, both on desktop and uh, mobile Chrome, and it's also supported in Opera. However, there are still some major players who haven't supported it yet. Um, Internet Explorer doesn't support it, Microsoft Edge doesn't support it, and Apple Safari doesn't support it. Both both iOS and their desktop version of Safari just doesn't support it yet. Now there are some caveats with this. First of all, the web page has to have focus for the vibration to occur. So for example, if there's say a set timeout that after say five seconds a vibration would occur, if the web browser or the tab doesn't have focus, that vibration won't occur. In addition, if there's a long running vibration and the user leaves that browser, um, say on a mobile device, the vibration will stop. Um, in addition, the test for vibration support, which we'll see in just a second, that is only to determine if the browser actually supports the vibration API, not if the platform itself supports vibration. So for example, Mozilla Firefox supports uh, the vibration API. If you run the test on a mobile device, it'll say, yes, I support uh, vibration, which it probably does because a phone usually has that. But if you run it on a desktop, it will also say, yes, I support vibration, even though the desktop itself doesn't actually support vibration. Uh, so how does this work? Well, first you're going to want to test if you actually have vibration support. Uh, that's really simple. Just do navigator.vibrate. If that evaluates to true, then you have vibration support. Uh, if you just want to do a vibrate once and stop, like let's say for one second, it's navigator.vibrate and you pass in the number of milliseconds that you want it to vibrate. There is also a feature in it that you can specify um, for it'll you can have like a pattern so you can do navigator to vibrate and you pass in an array the first one is the number of milliseconds that you want it to vibrate for the second is then the number of milliseconds it should be silent for the third is the number of milliseconds that it should vibrate for the fourth is how silent it should be and so on and so forth you can also stop all vibration from occurring by doing navigator.vibrate and passing zero to it. So for example, if a user, let's say you're in a game, a user has crashed and you need to have some sort of force feedback for a few seconds and they hit the pause button, you can do a navigator.vibrate zero to stop vibration from occurring. So let's jump into a demo here. Okay, so I have a sample web page stubbed out here with a couple different options. Uh, the first one is our one second vibration. So when the user taps this, it should vibrate for one second and then stop. The second option is vibration pattern. When the user taps this, it should go through a little pattern and then stop. And the last two are actually related. Uh, when the user taps a 10 second vibration, it should start vibrating for 10 seconds, which will give us a big enough window to stop all vibrations. All right, so let's jump over to the code here. Um, I have just a simple web page stubbed out just using Bootstrap and jQuery, uh, nothing fancy. Um, though one thing to note here is that I actually have two different sections. The first one is the unsupported section. Uh, we want this to display and only this to display if the user doesn't have uh, vibration built into their browser. The second section is the supported one where it'll have all the different options that the user can click. 
So down here in the code, uh, in the document ready, I'll be getting things together here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create a polyfill for vibration. Now in the case of Firefox and Chrome, it already supports it correctly, so we don't really need to do this. This is really just future proofing uh, in the case if Microsoft or if Apple adds it in the vendor prefixed way. Now I'm going to be overriding uh, Vibrate on Navigator. Some people don't really like doing that, um, and that's okay. The reason I don't have a problem doing this is that I'm not really changing the functionality of how it works. I expect if I call navigator.vibrate, it should vibrate the phone. And even if that means that I need to go through vendor prefixes, I still expect it to work that way. Um, but it's up to you. So let's start out by doing navigator.vibrate, and I'm going to do navigator dot vibrate if it's natively supported it's natively supported great otherwise let's do navigator dot webkit vibrate or navigator dot mos vibrate or navigator dot ms vibrate so that should take care of all the different possibilities out there or if users may be on an old browser something like that so we first need to perform our check here to see whether or not the user has vibration so I'm going to do navigator.vibrate. If they don't have navigator.vibrate, then we simply want to hide that supported tab, or the uh, div, excuse me, and they will just see the unsupported message. Otherwise, we're going to hide that unsupported message, and then they'll see all the different options. So the first one is going to be the one second vibration. So let's do navigator.vibrate, and we're going to give it 1,000 milliseconds, or one second. Now in our click handler for pattern, we're going to do navigator.vibrate, and I'm going to pass it an array. Let's do, say, 500 milliseconds vibrating, 100 milliseconds not, 250 milliseconds vibrating, 100 milliseconds not, and then 1,000 milliseconds or one second vibrating. Now let's jump down to the 10 second vibration click handler. So when the user clicks this, we want to vibrate for 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds. And then when the user clicks the stop uh, vibration button, we will do navigator.vibrate0, which would stop all vibrations. So once again, the user can tap that 10 second window, and then we'll be able to quickly tap that zero second, uh, or the stop op button, and it should stop it. So our first check, let's make sure our... Uh, vibration support uh, is working correctly. So we jump over to Firefox and refresh here. And Firefox, as you can see, supports vibration. So that's displaying correctly. Um, of course, to note, it doesn't actually check whether the platform you're on supports vibration. Like in this case, I'm on a laptop. This doesn't support vibration. It's a question of whether the browser supports it. But let's uh, also check over at Microsoft Edge here. I have the same uh, stubbed, up, stubbed out window here. Let me refresh this. And as we can see, it's saying that no, this browser does not support vibration, uh, the Vibration API. So with that, I'm going to go ahead, upload this to some uh, storage here that I can access from my phone. And let's jump over to my phone here and uh, give it a shot and see what happens. So this is an old Android test device that I have that I've installed Mozilla Firefox on. And I've already navigated to the web page we had put together. So the first part we're going to want to do is tap on the one second vibration we can hear that worked. Now the second part we're going to want to do is tap on the vibration pattern. And that played the pattern we wanted. Finally, let's do the 10 second and then tap on stop all vibrations. And we can hear that that stopped the vibrations. In conclusion, adding vibration feedback to your mobile web pages is actually really easy. Uh, it has pretty good browser support, but there are still some major players that are lacking, uh, specifically Microsoft and Apple. There are some caveats to how you can use it, but it is very functional and very powerful. And overall, I would say that it is useful for making a richer user experience, um, especially if you want to have a more native experience for a mobile user, but you can't rely on it being there, uh, both for the fact that that um, some web browsers just don't support it, and, well, to be honest, that you may not even have vibration built into the device. So thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter, too. We've got a lot, a lot of other great content coming down the pipeline, and we want to make sure we can stay in touch with you. Thanks.